Ya, oke. Okay. Ya. Once I finish this, this, this chapter, then we will look at a lot of questions. Be because that, that's, the, that's the part where more question practice will come in. Okay? Uh, all this area that we have done so far is not that there's no question, but I think they are quite straightforward, less thinking. You, you can just do it yourself, okay? But uh, you know the handout I gave to you? Those are the questions that you can go through, which covers some of the areas that I have actually covered with you. Okay, uh, let's go, go to social responsibility. So can any one of you uh, relate to me what is social responsibility? Or typically, people like to use the phrase CSR, yes, CSR, okay? Yeah, corporate social responsibility, which basically means that the social responsibility belongs to company. Hey, where's the guy? Ping one left already, yeah? Oh, he moved there. Okay, I thought he jumped already. So, what do, you, what do you understand about CSR? Or can you just give me an example of CSR? actions that companies are doing no okay no plastic uh, which are basically heading towards the direction of what okay environment usually environment is one of the main csr costs things that to do with save the world beside plastic huh? don't use what or don't use child labor. Okay, if, if you if you're not into child labor, then that's not environment. That's more of what? Sorry? What's the word? So what? Society is not right. No, no, no. Yes, yeah, social. Social is the word. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Because whenever it's to do with people, it's always called social. That's why social media is about the media for us to communicate and network, okay? Okay, uh, so we, we more or less have very basic concept about CSR, okay? We do have concept about CSR. Now, you, you gave me an example that relate to environment, that relate to social efforts, which they are all correct, okay, which they are all correct. Okay, but uh, do we have a standard of looking at social responsibility so that we can actually uh, judge or even assess whether an action is truly socially responsible? Okay, you, you probably don't understand what I'm saying, right? Okay, now. Uh, let me just rephrase with an example. Is planting tree considered socially responsible? Let's say, mm. all right, all right. So let let's say uh, MCKL decided to have this project to plant ten thousand tree. Is that good? I mean, I mean, it's it's good for the environment, right? Okay, so. We decided to plant 10,000 trees, and this is how we're going to do it. We go to all the city, and right in front of the traffic light, we plant a tree. How? Doesn't matter. We just plant anywhere, so long we plant the tree. How? Still good, huh? Now, that, that's where you find that an action, although is noble, but if you position it wrongly, 
it will actually destroy the effect, right? That's why not all social action will be regarded as socially responsible until the fact, like, for example, we look at a consensus. That means everybody must agree to your action. It, it, it's like, for example, I feel I can sing very well. That's what I feel. Uh, uh, okay. But because I feel I sing very well, and they say music is good for study, every time when I start class, I tell all of you, I'm going to sing you for 10 minutes. So I start singing for 10 minutes. Then I start class. But, but you know, I could be a terrible singer, but I say I'm doing it to entertain you. You know, it's really social. But, but you see, that, that's an example of where your action is not regarded as socially responsible. Now, that, that's the consensus that we're seeing. Your action has to be positioned right. That everybody must be able to agree, must be able to accept. Okay? Okay, the first thing I would like to discuss with you is... Uh, now, now, I'm not so worried about defining what is social responsibility because it's really not hard. It's very easy. All right? We can see that. Uh, but I have put in an, a simple definition taken from Investopedia. CSR is more of a model of how company wants to be more socially accountable. Okay? They want to be more socially accountable. And uh, when you say socially accountable, then you're accountable to a group of audience. Who are they? The people would include your stakeholder, right? Generally a stakeholder. And of course, it's not just a uh, um, shareholder alone, but it also includes the general public. You know, public that they, they, don't, they may not have interaction with the business directly. For example, when you want to be more environmental friendly, it benefits everyone. But they may not be even your customer, they may not be even your employee, but you feel that there is a need to address them. Okay? Now, that's why... We want to be more accountable to stakeholder and even to public, okay? Now, so the whole idea of pursuing CSR, right? It's because we want to earn this thing called corporate citizenship. Now, I'm going to ask a very tough question. When was the last time you heard of this phrase? <laughs> Okay, where? Here. Which chapter in the notes? Stakeholder theory. Wow, thank you. See, at least got one study. Cop uh, we, we study that in stakeholder theory. Remember we talked about agency theory and stakeholder theory? And the main difference between agency and stakeholder is what? The consideration. Stakeholder theory talks about how we will also take into account the interests of stakeholder. And the whole idea of doing that is to what? To get the license exchange. We are exchanging. If you go back to the notes, you can see we have a diagram called exchange theory. It's the concept that we produce desirable effects to our stakeholder. In return, the stakeholder will give you the support. Now, that, that's corporate citizenship, okay? Now, so the whole idea of CSR is that, okay? Now, and uh, do we have framework for CSR? Yes. Uh, if you go to your Google internet, you can see there's ISO 26000. Okay? Remember ISO? When was the ISO that we've discussed before? Corruption, yeah, wow. Shame on you, man. Okay, why not need study? Okay, I'm just joking, joking, joking. Ah, okay. Stakeholder theory, uh, don't offend stakeholder, all right? Yeah, co corruption is where we talk about ISO, we talk about how we can have our anti-bribery management, okay? But we, we didn't actually study into the ISO, but I, I mentioned that there is an ISO there. Now, this is another ISO. Now, you know ISO is actually a kind of certification, right? The, the, the most common ISO that you've come across is, is what? Is on? Quality, exactly. Your, your ISO 9002, I think. All right? It's on quality. 
Now, but this is an ISO on social responsibility. They are not giving a certification. You have, you have to see this very carefully. Yeah? They gave us guidance telling businesses or organization on how they can operate in a more socially responsible manner. Okay, but it's only guidance. So you cannot be certified. You understand? There's no certification. Meaning you cannot get yourself accredited to claim that, yeah, I, I've got that standard, you, you can't. But you can tell people that uh, we are using ISO 26000 guideline, but you cannot claim you have the logo that ISO 26000 certified, you, you can't. Because end of the day, uh, we really believe that a lot of things cannot be verified. May maybe not at this stage, huh? perhaps in the future, we never know when they can come up with a more measurable framework and stuff like that, okay? Okay, uh, let's start with this. Huh? From the company's perspective, why in the first place directors want to pursue CSR? What is the motivation? What is the motivation? So is it all right for a company that totally denies CSR? I, I, I don't want to do any social responsibility. You know, I, I just do my business following the law. I don't break the law. I comply with the law. But I don't have anything in mind about how I should be charitable, how I must help my stakeholder. You, you know, that's not in my mind. To me, it's make profit. But legally. Is there anything wrong with the idea? No. Do, do you think the business will not grow because they have that kind of idea? that CSR is necessary for you to grow, that without CSR, you can't go big. Now, so end of the day, there are different viewpoints. There are people who say that, you know, CSR is just a gimmick for your business reputation, doing it for you to look good. There are people who really has the burden. All right? Now, it's like example I'm telling you like, uh, Education is so noble, and, and I really enjoy educating people because of the cost, C-A-U-S-E, the cost, okay? Because it's really meaningful, because it touched life, all right? That's why I want to do it. It's my value. Why? Wow, it sounds good, right? You, you know, when that people, mm, wow, this. But at the back, I also can say, but education is still profitable, man. So that's why we are doing it. But we can tell people that we are doing it out of the value, but actually it's the profit. But there are people who truly do it because of the value and not the profit. Now, of course, very hard for us to draw the line on. End of the day, how would you know, right? Can you not? Now, that's why end of the day, we have people that belong to different categories of their mindset. So what I'm going to do is to discuss with you uh, generally mindset of different people. How do they look at CSR? Okay. Now, uh, the first one is this ethical stance. Uh, it's uh, the work by Johnson's and Scholes. Okay. They say generally we can classify, uh, you can call board of directors if you want, that into four groups. They either subscribe to one of the four, okay? So you could be in the first group, you could be in the second group, in the third group. Now, it really doesn't matter which group you're in. There's no right or wrong. But different groups suggest that you have different mindset. Now, I think the group is quite easy for you to guess. Now, short-term shareholder interest. What kind of view that they have about CSR? What is the, their priority? Who do they concentrate on? It's called short-term shareholder interest. You compare with position number three, where it's called multiple stakeholders obligation. So who do you actually focus at? Shareholder only, right? Now, this is a position that you only focus at shareholder. 
and and if I say you focus at shareholder, that means your your motive is what? Money. It's it's profit. All right. It's all about whether you can make profit, make more profit. All right. So that's the motive. Okay. And the the position is short term. Meaning, if you only look at making the most return in the shortest time, will you even think of investing into CSR? Now, do, do you think that from director's point of view, do you think that investing in CSR is, is capable of helping you to make even more profit? No. That investing in CSR can help you to make even more profit. Make, make, can, right? But short term, can or not? It, it's definitely not short term, right? It's definitely long term thing. Now, that's why a short term shareholder interest is, is a motivation where you subscribe to totally zero CSR. You, you don't believe in CSR, okay? So we subscribe to a position that zero CSR. Okay, you just want to do your business, okay, in a way that you comply with the law and nothing more than that. Just comply with the law. Comply with law. That's it. Okay? So, position that you may not be able to, to see any kind of social actions being, being uh, implemented, and it doesn't matter. Okay, let, let's say, for, for instance, uh, you're going to sign a contract to do a joint venture with somebody that the contract duration will only be three years. And, and you do not know after three years what's going to happen to you. Will you be able to renew the contract or is it going to end there? Nobody knows. Now, what is your mindset then? Come with a mindset of all the noble intention. Use all the profit to help people and build up the image of the organization. So at the end of the three years, you don't take any profit with you anymore. And then the guy says, okay, that's it. We don't renew the joint venture. Will you have that mindset? It'd be crazy, right? Since the duration is only three years, I'll just come in with a mindset, I just want to make all my money I can in that three years, legally. Don't talk about CSR because I don't think it's going to make any difference. Now, that's short term, okay? Short term. Now, what about if you subscribe to this long-term shareholder interest? Now, this becomes a position that you, you understand CSR can be useful to make more money in the future. So you recognize that CSR can be useful to enhance returns. Okay? CSR can be useful to enhance returns. Uh, but not all CSR can be capable of doing that. For example, uh, uh, I mean, just take a simple one. Uh. You're going to make a donation to old folks home. There are two old folks home. One is a really like run-down old folks home in dire state that require help desperately. One is that famous old folks home run by the top minister, you know, and then all the Tan Sri, all people are there. If you're going to make a donation, which one would you choose? Now, I'm talking about can benefit you in the future. Why? In what way? The fellow so dire, say nobody care about the old folks people there. When they die, also nobody bother. You still throw your money there. you crazy, ah? Then your, your intention is wrong already. I'm saying strictly on return. You must be very clear. I, I know you have a good heart, but now we are not talking about heart now, okay? <laughs> we are talking about strictly on return. That's why I say shareholder interest. I don't care about other things. 
if I only motivated with the intention that this thing that I'll do must bring me more return. So actually, you are not doing it sincerely. You know, the motive is you are just trying to use that social actions in a way to portray yourself a good image. Now that then you will know. That's why you will say, let's go to the old old folks home with all the ministers there, with the tan tree there, and then if better got newspaper, can take photo, come to and then take the check. You know, you do that kind of thing. Now, that's long term shareholder interest. It's more for reputation. It's more for future benefits. Now. That, that's it. But yes, there are people that they are in that position. And somehow we still say, well, it's still good, man. at least they still do good. If they want the name, let them have the name. Man. Is it not? Okay. Now, truly that there are people who are more noble, that they do believe that it's not just about money. Especially they find that as a business organization, you can be a very powerful actor. Because the size of organization is big, you see. Any one effort that organization take, it brings a lot of impact. So that's why at the end of the day, they can use themselves as a mover to start moving towards certain direction. Now, so if you start to take into a position called multiple stakeholder obligation, now I think that the term has changed very significantly. Really. Now, first, it's called stakeholder. It's not called shareholder. Showing what? You don't just look at shareholder, but you recognize the stakeholders as well, which may include your customers, may include your environment, general public, employees. Okay, And we look at multiple, meaning our accountability is not just for one people or two, I mean one or two group, but it's for many groups. And we take it up as obligation. All right? We take it up as obligation. Meaning you do feel that there is a duty, that you have to do it because it's not a choice anymore. You feel that there's a burden. It's like, for example, your parent. Regardless of how terrible you are, will your parent ever give up on you? Will your parent say that I, I hopeless, I, I don't want to do anything at all. You get lost, I get lost. Now open the door, go up. I don't want to see you from tomorrow. You, you know, employer might even say that to you. But parents don't say that to you, right? You, you know, that's, that's the difference, the obligation that we, we feel with us, that we carry. Now that's multiple stakeholder obligation. So if you have director that subscribe to this position, meaning the degree of social action will be how much? Much more higher, right? So that's why here, you expect that there will be much more CSR. Okay? Sleepy, yeah, sleepy, yeah. Oh, sleepy, yeah. It's okay, yeah. Normal, all right. I'm, I'm very, I'm very understanding. Okay, when you're sleepy, it's because that's our biological reaction after food. Okay, don't worry, sleep, uh. sleep. Okay, then enjoy yourself. Then wake up, we go back. All right. If all of you sleep better, then the class will finish real fast. If only one two sleep will be difficult. All of you sleep at the same time. We wake up, I'll finish it. <laughs> Slippers done already. Okay, now, okay. So the the whole idea of multiple stakeholder obligation, it's it's that on more CSR. Okay, position four is very strange. It's called shaper of society. Uh, try to guess exactly what is that. Huh? Teach people, Teach people good things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shape is to, to influence some people to behave in a certain way, which is right, shape. But teach not always good things. Right? Yeah, maybe an example would be more concrete. Because I do see before, mm. I come to my company, mm. company mm. one, but I do see before. Mm. So I'm trying to get more knowledge to ask my boss, hey, boss, no return, no return. So, 
Okay. So at that day, uh, uh, we go to the beach, right? Everyone went to the second mission. Okay. And everyone went to pick up the rubbish. The 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 organizer said to us, we picked up the robot. Later we need to cover the robot. Okay. Okay. So many people see us. Uh, then they start to follow. Oh, they they not not start to follow uh, but they feel uh, what's the big one? Some people. Or they feel only uh, uh, But they won't they won't throw uh, rubbish at the rubbish. Oh, okay. so, yeah, I, I mean the action motivates people. That, that's the funny part of a human. Human always see whenever people... You know, got once me and my son and my daughter, we were at cinema to watch movie. So we had a popcorn counter. So out of joke, I mean out of, not joke, like out of fun, uh, I told my son, hey, we look up and take a photo because up there is like a glass panel. Man. So three of us look up. So we took photo. And then we see all oh, people look up. <laughs> The photo is like all the face all look up. So, so like what you say is true. Uh, where people tend to follow by by looking at your action. Okay. Now, but uh, the degree of people follow in this extent is going to be greater than that. It, it's not so much on just a temporary effect. Like at that time, people just see you do and then they are they are inspired by you. No, it, it's going to be much more longer and permanent. That is the shaper of society that we're saying. You're going to shape a new culture. You're going to shape a new habit, the way how society behaves. Now, can you give me an example of a culture that people nowadays do much more often compared with people those days that they don't have? No plastic, okay? Yeah, no plastic, no straw, all right, but that's not so bad. Did, okay, did, did, do you agree Steve Jobs has successfully shaped the way how we communicate? Yeah. It was him who came up with iPhone. It was him who started the wave of smartphone. And that was where all the smartphones come out, and that was how things has changed, right? Now, how, how has smartphone changed us? We, we, we basically don't talk much, all right? People like look at the phone. So the way how they communicate has changed. Now, so the society has all changed as a result of the smartphone. So Apple is the shaper of society. They have shaped the communication culture. Do you think fast food has shaped the way we eat? I don't really agree. Now, my time uh, when I was a kid, uh, that's like how many years ago? Uh, 40, so if you, 30 years ago. Uh, Alright, 30 years ago. Uh, fast food, I only can eat uh, like once a year only. Birthday only got. Alright, other than birthday, don't have. Because fast food is a luxury food. We see KFC, we cry one, you know. <laughs> KFC, oh, the tear fall down. It's so touched by the KFC, you can see it not? And then the everything, I don't know whether you remember or not, but maybe you don't remember. Those days, KFC, you go in, uh, the restaurant, the stewardess come and serve you one. What's the Wow, see? You don't even know. You sit down, uh, you don't go to counter one, you sit down, they put the plate there, they put the fork and the knife, like the, like the high-class restaurant, then they come and take order, after they serve you the chicken. That was how KFC started. Wow, you don't even know, okay? That means you are much younger, huh? okay? So your, your time is very queued up with it, okay? uh, Those days are not quite luxurious. So we only eat KFC once you don't believe, ask your parent. You think I'm lying, right? The way Carson look at me and say, oh, it's really okay? Uh, go back and ask your parent, all right? So they serve you. Now, KFC to me is a, is a birthday feast. Once a year. Other than that, we don't ask for KFC one. Right? But now you see KFC, McDonald's is what? It's the food that you eat when you have don't know or don't know what to eat or don't know where to eat McDonald's. Okay? Don't know what to eat, KFC. So that, that's how we are. Parents will choose McDonald's breakfast as a fast solution for their children when they want to go to school. Because I see a lot of them like that one, they drive through, whoop, come out, ah, okay, breakfast. Then they drive, uh, while they drive, the kids eat, eat in the car. Then they reach the school, then they go down. It's like that. So, fast food has shaped the eating habit. And, and can you imagine how substantial or how significant if, if all these players 
decided to change this culture, for example, by inducing healthy option or cut away less healthy option and, and slowly tune you towards a direction, you know, when you start doing that, then the impact is quite significant because it's a lot of people on you. Now, that is called shaper of society. So if you're looking at that, right, now it's about how you drive a new culture. So from business perspective, how would a CSR be a shaper of society? Like, like you say, for example, through an action that bring very heavy impact to the society that it will get people to, to actually be inspired by that action and then that habit is to stay. For example, things that will make people more environmental friendly. All right. Now, I, I don't have example because I don't see organization at that level. Most of them are still looking at profit. I mean, you can't deny the fact that shareholder needs return. But I have seen individuals that are at that, at that level. Individuals like Bill Gates, <laughs> all right, like Warren Buffett say that when they die, I don't know why it must be when they die, okay, they will have most of their money go into their charity and then it will use for this so-called social cost. Now, that, that's like Melissa Foundation. Bill Gates has this foundation that is doing research in AIDS. All right, I think it's AIDS, okay, if I'm not wrong, okay? So, uh, or, or cancer, I think it's AIDS, uh, if AIDS uh, okay? So, that, that's example of shaper of society. That is why this group of rich individual, they go out campaigning, asking all the rich men to give back the money. And, and that happens to even Mark Zuckerberg, that they give back. So, they try to do that to the to the Asian rich people. They fly here to China and then try to convince the Chinese to give up all they earn to do the good cause. You tell me what's the result from the way you laugh also, I think I know what you're going to say. You think it's going to be successful? No way, man. The Chinese make their money, give you back, and you see how are you, correct or not? So, no way. That's why they don't understand. All the Chinese, for what? I, I keep this for my generation, so that, that's their mindset, okay? Whereas the Matsale is quite different. They always believe like, I don't need so much money, I just give back. Okay? Alright, now, that's the first part, which is uh, the quite straightforward one. Okay, I'm going to discuss something that uh, much heavier, which I think has more things to discuss, like, not, not like Johnson's and School. And they are similar with Johnson's and School, but in a more elaborated way, in more detailed way. Okay, this is inherited from those days, the P1 syllabus. You know, SBL is a result of P1, P3 combined, okay? So this is inherited from P1. Now, and the examiner wrote an article that time. That's why I took back the same article and put it here, which is good enough, okay? Now, but before I start, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I will illustrate this in a diagram. The seven position of social responsibility. Okay, I'll just illustrate and, and let you have an idea. What about that seven position of social responsibility? Now, the first position is called pristine capitalist. And then we have Expedient. And we have Social Contract. And Social Ecologist. Socialist, feminist, 
and deep ecologies. Okay, uh, now, I have intentionally put it up in this manner so that I think you can see why 567 was not in a chronology order, like it goes out 567, but it was like one horizontal line. Okay, I'll tell you why later. Now, what comes after this line are called the radical position or the radical view, okay? the radical position, extreme, extreme, extreme position or radical view, okay, it comes down. Now, the first four positions are generally uh, more conventional and it's also easier for everybody to agree. Most of us will find no problem to accept the first four positions. Now, in fact, in the first four position, we can say that the higher position that you go, the more socially responsible you become. Okay, we can say the higher position, the more CSR you become. The more socially responsible you become. But I cannot say position 5, 6, 7. The higher level you go, the more CSR you become. I can't say that. In, in fact, 5, 6, 7, it's extreme position that there's no way of me comparing one to another. I'll explain to you later why is that so. Okay. Now, let's take the first four position. The first two positions are very money-oriented. The focus is still profit, okay? The focus is still money. Now, can I just go back to the notes? I'm going to highlight some of the keyword to you. Okay, let's look at pristine capitalism. Huh? Now, the position of shareholder wealth maximization. Okay? And you see the vocab, the choice of words they use is so strong that they say anything that you're doing when they reduce shareholders' wealth is like a theft. It's like you're stealing shareholders' money. So it's a very strong position. It's a strong word. Imagine, imagine. Uh, that, that's a disaster, that's a COVID virus outbreak. So the company wants to be more compassionate and donate 100,000 to the government to address the COVID outbreak. The shareholder kind of, why you steal my money? Huh? I'm going to steal your money. You donate 100,000, that's my money, you know. I'm the shareholder, why you take my money and donate? Uh, that, that's the position, okay? That's the position. So, it's a position that we cannot tolerate any social action. Because you don't have to do that one. I mean, what, what are you going to get by giving 100,000 donations? Show me the ROI. How 100 will bring me back 300? You, you, know, you can't do that, right? So, so that is what you're saying. So zero CSR. Okay? Zero. The whole idea is wealth maximization. No social action is like stealing money of the shareholder. Now, if you go back to Johnson's and Scholes earlier, right? This is exactly the same as what? Short-term shareholder interest. Okay. Come down to Expedient. Now, Expedient had the same underli underlying value as Pristine Capitalist, which means their mind is still about maximizing shareholders' wealth. So that's why I say it's still about money. Okay, but the slight different, huh? they recognize that some social responsibility may better 
strategically position the company to maximize profit. Now, the word strategically position to maximize the profit. Now, this become a position that we will see CSR from the strategic point of view. to be strategically vital. Now, in short, we call it strategic CSR. Can I relate to you English word? All CSR action are definitely CSR strategy. But not all CSR strategies are strategic. Can I understand what I'm saying or not? Can I? Okay, write down, write down. Okay? Okay, one sentence. Not all CSR strategies are strategic. Not all sleepy. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, ah. what can I do? I'll stand up. And actually, actually, you know, in in my church class, ah, the, the BSF that I do every Tuesday night, we will teach the young children about standard one to two at that. The class is one and a half hour. Can you believe one and a half hour for a standard form? Study Bible. Right? So, it's like terrible, right? But we have this so-called uh, uh, a program that tells us what we must do. So, after every 20 minutes, uh, we will have, I, I, I forgot the term, but we will play a bit with the children or do some simple stretching. Okay? Then the child will like get more refreshed. And I always find it so good, you know. But don't know how to do it with our students. <laughs> but actually, you think and see, may, maybe you all feel like, like strange. But actually, if after every 30 minutes, all of you stand up and we stretch a bit. All right? Okay, then play with your friend a bit. Okay, pull each other. All right? Then you sit down, you feel so much better. I really hope. Right, next time, uh, when you become a lecturer, please transform the class. I'm, I'm too old to do that. All right? Nobody will look. I mean, it looks strange on me, okay? So I can't do I, I I feel so sorry, all right? But you can. You're a young guy. You're like two generations below me. Two. 20 years apart, right? Uh, two generations. Okay, okay, okay. One generation, right? <laughs> so not all CSR strategies are strategic. What do you mean? Okay. Again, okay, example. Eh? Uh, let's say MCKL decided to organize blood donation. Is that CSR? Yes. Okay. So, if it's a CSR, then would you agree that's a CSR strategy? Our, our strategy is to call for a blood donation. Now, that, that is definitely a CSR strategy. Now, the next question is, is it strategic? Meaning, will the blood donation bring any return to MCKL in the long run? Yes, sir. How? How many people who came to MCKL and donate blood remember MCKL had a blood donation? How many people, because of MCKL blood donation, signed up with MCKL? So you, you, you agree that the blood donation is just, just a good, kind gesture, right? It's just a good and kind gesture that, you know, we just want to help people and we are doing it. That doesn't bring benefit, right? Okay, think about this. Every year in March, I will get all the ACCA students to involve in this tax return week. So we will advertise in the newspaper and say, it's the time to submit tax return. 
And if you have problem, please come to MCKL during this whole week. We have all our trained students to help you with the tax return, to key in the form, to advise you, to tell you what you can claim, what you cannot claim, and we do it every year. Now, do you think that will bring more effects to MCKL? Like the parent come and say, Wow, girl, you're very good, girl. Wow, why you know all that, huh? Oh, I learned in my class. Wow, oh, what, what class you learn, huh? ACC, hmm, okay, okay. Maybe my son can study ACC also, right? Yeah, auntie, you should, you know, it's cheap, it's Tai Chang, like that. that, that the, now, you, you see the effect. Now, blood donation, can you do that? Give <laughs> <laughs> ACC blood. So, whoever receive your blood naturally become a better accountant. <laughs> now, now, see the difference, huh? So, not all CSR strategy can be strategic. It, it doesn't mean that whatever you do will bring back a return. Now, you see, Singapore, for example, they're very smart. They always come to Malaysia and do what? Shopping. <laughs> no, that... that that's Singaporean. I'm saying Singapore. <laughs> okay? I'm talking about the garment. Huh? Garment, la, garment. Not the Singaporean. Okay? The Singapore garment. You know, they always come to Malaysia and organize the kind of maths competition, Olympiad maths, and then see who, who excelled and who became champion. And then what will, it, what will they do? Yeah. They, they come and offer you and tell the parent, uh, you know, I can send your kids to Singapore. We'll take care of your kids' education, study all the way until the end. We provide accommodation. We let them study. We pay for everything. It, it, it's virtually like it doesn't cost you anything, you know. But the only condition is what? You must work there. You must work there for a short period of time only. Then after that, you finish, you decide to come back. But the problem is how to come back all. I mean, you think and see how to come back. If I work there a few years, my salary is about, let's say, don't say a lot, 7,000 sing. Come back to Malaysia and earn 5,000 ringgit. <laughs> How to come back? Very hard to come back. Man. Now, that's why they are taking away Malaysia talent. And we will take what? Abangka. Okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> right. but, you say one, okay? but I kind of agree. Yeah. That's why we import the less talented people into the country. While we keep exporting the talent out from the country. out to Outside, go out. So we are losing. The country productivity will be affected. This is our problem. But they are smart in their program because whatever they do will benefit the country. Now, that is a strategic CSR. So I hope you understand huh, what it means to be strategic. Must be able to bring back return. People will remember you. That is measurable all right. Okay, next one. Now, these two positions has the word social there, meaning it concerns people. Okay, social contract as well as social ecologist. It concerns people, all right? Okay, what is the difference between social contract and social ecologist? There's a very thin line in here. Now, uh, the description, the examiner say that this is a, a term that they borrowed from political theory, all that. Now, you can read all that, but I just want to go straight to the point. Now, social contract is basically suggesting business enjoy a license. Granted by the society. Why? Because the business act in a way deserving of their license. Now, this is a corporate citizen concept. It's a concept you have to act. You have to act. You have to produce desirable effect. That's why we expect Business will have to act. Then the society will give you back the support. 
Okay, you must act to get the support. So, your position is more obligation. It's a more obligatory position. Okay, you are forced to do it. Alright, you're forced to do it. Now, later I'll give you another example to, to show you all the things together. Okay, whereas social ecologies, right, it's still motivated towards the people. That's why the word social is there. But ecologies is what? And ecologies is generally people that they are very... Uh, deal with environment a lot. Lah. The ecology system. You deal with environment a lot. Okay. Now, this is now the slight different. Now, if you just go on to the almost the last statement, they say, organization... Adopt socially or environmentally responsible policy. Now read carefully. Eh? Not because it has to. In order to be aligned with the norm. But. There's a but. Okay. But it feels it has the responsibility to do so. So, it's a position that is more voluntary. Social contract is more obligatory. This is more voluntary. So, they, they want to do it because they feel the need to do it. Now, I'm going to give a simple example for you to understand. How will this be different? Okay? Okay. Let's say right now, you are facing a decision to replace your factory machine. Now, you have two choices. Option A, cost 10 million. Option B, cost 30 million. Three times the cost. Now, what is the difference? This one is very clean meaning it's very environmental friendly. Okay? Very clean. The technology is very good. No, but, but A, it's not the very clean technology. Okay? It's not very clean. But it's not illegal. It's not illegal. Eh? The, the law never say you must go for option B. The law say option A is good enough. You know, example, the, there are many countries uh, looking towards banning petrol cars. A lot of countries, uh, they are moving towards banning petrol car. That means you are expecting like maybe by 2030, uh, which is 10 years from now, a lot of countries that are more advanced one like Japan, they are facing out petrol car. That means they don't want to use petrol. So that is what people are looking towards because the biggest problem with petroleum is car. So by facing away petrol car, then basically we do not need to use oil. Okay, we just gonna use other form of energy. Now, so there are countries moving towards that direction. But but the next question is, how how soon will Malaysia go into banning petrol car? <laughs> okay, definitely will not be the next ten year long. All right, will not be the next ten, next ten years, especially when the government is still thinking of coming up with a third car maker. How are you gonna make car that that after a while you keep saying that you're gonna ban the car? Cannot be already. People cannot sell already. Now that that's why chances is our Malaysian law will not do it so fast. So now you see or not that the law of the country is very different because of the status of their maturity. Some may do it earlier, some may do it later. Okay, so based on that, I want you to understand. Option A is not illegal. Even though it's not clean, it is not illegal. Okay. So, question. As a pristine capitalist, which option will you go for? A. Wow. Very good. So simple, right? A. Okay. 
as a pristine capitalist, your choice is A. Okay, now I'm going to ask you. <clears throat> now, people generally expect B. Okay? <clears throat> People generally expect B. It's a norm. It's a norm. It's not in the government. It's not in the legislation. The law never say you cannot go for A or B or what. But the people are generally hoping for B. Okay, so if you are the company, again, if you subscribe to Pristine Catalyst, what is your option? Still A. It, it's still not illegal. Eh? I will still go for the option that will maximize my return. Okay. But if people generally expect B, what is your choice? If let's say you are a social contractor in A or B? B, right? You know, as a social contractor in, you go for B. Because you know that at the end of the day, the support of the people is important. And yes, it's not illegal, but the legality is not enough. You will say that if I just go for A, even though I can tell people that I don't break the law, but I know they will not like me. I know that at, at the end of the day, people will not support my brand. That's why I have no choice. I go for B. Okay? Now, but compare with these, uh, people has no expectation. Okay? People has no expectation. Do you know in the, in, in some country, your plastic bottle, uh, they actually will have this uh, uh, so-called like agent that will collect so that they will take back and process it. Not like here in Malaysia, you just dump anywhere you like, right? I mean, dump, you could just dump in a dustbin, right? But, you know, in other countries, they actually have people to take it back so that they don't pollute the environment. So imagine Pepsi sell you the, the cola, the Pepsi cola, but they also have people going around the city to collect back the trash for Pepsi. Now, that, that's an extra effort that they do. But, but do you have that kind of expectation? We don't, right? Malaysians generally don't have that kind of demand. That's why you, you don't have to do it because the people don't expect that. Now, this is what we are saying about expectation. Okay? Now, so tell me, when people do not have that demand, what is your choice if you subscribe to social contractor in? What is your choice? A or B now? You have 50% chance to be correct. Social contract. You are, you, are, you are a social contract now. Just that the difference is the people don't have an expectation that you need to use machine B. They don't have. So basically, it's up to you. You can use any machine you like. And machine A is not illegal. So in that case, which, is, which option will you take? A or B? Which one? A. You take A. I mean, why spend extra money when it's not in line with your expectation? You don't have to, what? Correct, huh? You do A also, nobody is going to complain. Then why, what's the point of spend? See, that is a social contractor in position. You will go back to choice A because it's not required. But, but, what if, if you're a social ecologist? Even when this is not part of the demand of the people is not expected, but you go for B. You still do it 
because it's good. So, yes, you, you feel it's good. You think it's good for the environment, but even though people are not expecting, you say, it's okay, we'll do it. Now, now, do you know how to differentiate an ecologist and a contractorian position? That's where I'm saying obligatory and voluntary. Okay? Now, so we have finished the four conventional position. And we're going to go to the three extreme. Well, I see you're very hard to struggle on. More and more people start to battery load. Okay. Let's look at socialists. <clears throat> Alright, now guys, socialist is not arguing about the degree of social responsibility. Socialists argue the point of view that a business is more of a capitalist. What's the difference? What's a socialist uh, a government? Okay, it's like everybody is equal and everybody is the owner, fair enough? Okay, let me ask a question. If you go and see the goreng pisang by the roadside, eh? You know, some Indonesian stores sell the goreng pisang by the roadside one. Okay. What color is their oil? Brown. Brown. Like? After cooking. Yeah, after cooking. But Carson said, black. <laughs> black, you know. That is black. <laughs> now, anyway, I know what he's trying to say. He's trying to say maybe it looks like this. La. But it's still not black. La, okay? but, but, but actually, he's not wrong. Okay? I was actually expecting people to say black. Because it really looks so dark, right? It looks so dark. All right? Now, let me ask you. Has any of your parents... Fry anything in your life for you to eat that the oil is that color. Why not? Tell your mom, hey mom, you sell me, you keep frying one time, you throw the oil, you fry many times, the golden pizza is all like that, why? Then you save more money. Your mom will not do that to you, why? Because you and your mom belong to the same family. But the Goring Pisang and you got no family relationship. You die is your problem, right? I care only about my profit. We are different group. You see the idea? That's why the argument of socialist position is all the businesses out there, right? They are actually what they call capitalists. The capitalist has this mindset of making money. Now, that's why they use the word business is a concentrator of wealth. So, the socialist is blaming the capitalist. Okay? The socialist is blaming the capitalist. In fact, they say, even if they claim themselves to be environmentally responsible or socially responsible, even if they claim that they are doing that, they say these are more of adopting token policy. What is a token policy? It's, it's like giving tips. Huh? They, they don't really mean it, huh? but they just don't want to be seen so bad. Huh? At least they do something. Do you know if you go to BAT website, huh? British American Tobacco, they sell what? Huh? They sell cigarette, right? Do you know in their website, huh? they have one section called How to Stop Smoking? <laughs> Serious. You go and see. Serious. They tell you, Ways to teach you to stop smoking. Now, that's ridiculous, right? Because they are selling cigarettes and you tell people how to stop smoking. You really mean that? But why are they doing that? 
Do you know if you work in VAT, every month you get one, uh, uh, one pack, uh, I don't know how do you call that, like one loaf like that, of yeah. free cigarette. Yeah. Cigarette, cigarette. They give you one, one bar like that, like one loaf like that. You get one for free. Right? The then my friend used to work there, and, and my friend does not smoke, so every time we'll come back and ask whoever in our, our, our circle who won, and he will sell to them at a much cheaper price. That's what they used to do in the past. And the best thing is they give you one loaf uh, and they say company has no smoking policy. They don't want you to smoke in the company because they want to be seen socially responsible. They say smoking is a choice, but we don't encourage you to smoke. Now, to me, that's ridiculous. If you're really so good, lah, why not you change British American tobacco to British American tea? Stop planting tobacco leaf, plant tea leaf and promote tea. Don't promote cigarette. Then you save the whole world, you are. Can you see it But they are doing that as part of what? Now, I, I see that as a token policy. So a lot of things that you do is not really sincere. Basically, that's their argument. Now, so what is the solution? That, that's the criticism. What is the solution? So the socialist solution is they say... Change the way how you do business. Okay? Change the way how you do business. That you can address the imbalance in the society. And you can benefit the stakeholder beyond the owner. So at the end of the day, don't just look at the owner. Okay? Now give some pictures at the back there, lah, just to, to give you some interest to see what people are doing. What do you see in these two packaging? Okay, who agree with me McDonald food is healthy? No one, huh? Okay, thank you. Now, who agree with me, McDonald food is of high quality? Only one of me. The rest? Eh? Okay. Okay, what product that you think is high quality? Like the what? The what? Mac what? The coffee. Okay, you think the coffee is high quality. Alright? Now, now, back to this important definition. Okay? Tell me what do you understand when I say food is of high quality? For example, if my chicken meat is chicken, do you call that quality? Is that important? Imagine a chicken is not chicken. Your chicken could be red, 95% chicken, 5% red. Could be, right? Or 50% chicken. 50% chicken intestine. Could be, right? Okay, so my chicken is 100% chicken from the meat. Is that quality? Okay, you agree. My chicken is fresh. That means from the time I serve to you, it will be within two to three months. It will not be something that like I will keep in the fridge frozen for five years and then come and serve you. I mean, I'm just suggesting, all right? Or maybe one week or two weeks, but it cannot be so fast. Huh? Okay, now do you think that's quality? That means it's fresh. I mean, not fresh like seafood cut and serve you, but it's fresh, okay? So the, the perception of quality to them, it's freshness of the food, all right? Authenticity of the food, that's quality. But when you look at the word quality, quality generally in your vocab, what is quality? Quality is expensive. Okay, some more? To standard, some more? Quality means what? Generally, when people say quality product, means what? Trusted. Good. Good. It's good. Quality is good, right? So, if quality is good and healthy is good, quality food is healthy. I'm talking about mathematics. Huh? Do you have that connection? Now, there are people who think because McDonald's keep promoting quality food. You look at their wrapping. Look at the words they write there. 100% dagging. 
So they're trying to tell you this is a concept. They tell you about the food is of high quality. Now, after a long period of time, people will buy the idea McDonald's is quality food, quality food, quality food, and it's good food, it's good food, good food, healthy food, healthy food. Then keep eating, you won't die. That, that's the thing that they're doing. They are doing a, a brainwashing effect on you. And the packaging can serve a lot of psychological meaning because generally when you look at the packaging, you feel healthy because it's green in color and it's full of vegetables, but it's called chicken. That, that's the whole idea. Now, if you see a lot of advertisement, they do. Tell me, which part of all these things that you see in McDonald's is really in McDonald's? Yeah, only the nugget and the burger. And the burger also, they're not showing you the whole piece. Show you the zoom in, only one part only, okay? Now, other than that, generally a lot of things are absent. Which part of McDonald's really has a lot of tomato? Don't tell me tomato sauce. Huh? <laughs> tomato sauce is chemical, no? <laughs> Alright? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on what burger you eat. So, a lot of the things that they give you an impression is very healthy, right? Alright? They give you an impression that they're healthy, but... Are they truly healthy or not? Now, that, that's where the question comes in. So, this is the argument. Now, I like this the best. See also you. Wow. McDonald's the best, man. Have you ever seen tomato as big as the burger? <laughs> See the, the illustration psychological effect. The way how they match things together and portray to you that it's really healthy because it looks raw and fresh. Now, that is what they're doing. And, and that is an example of what we are saying about, you know, sometimes when they, they use choice of words like quality, we promise you, we assure you. But actually, at the end of the day, they just want to sell more burgers, right? And you die. Now, this is the whole argument of socialists. And this is exactly the reason why your mom will not use that black color oil to fry food for you. But the people out there will do that because they know that they don't eat it. But if we see everyone as a family... Now, let me ask you a question. Let, let's use this. Uh. There's this magical box that I invented. Magical box, uh. That all of y'all, when you do business, uh, whatever you sell, right, when you put the money in, the ma in your, your cash box, uh, all the money will be sucked into this magical box. And end of the day, this box will equally distribute all the money to all of us. Okay? Now, you think of a scheme to cheat, to maximize the profit, to lower your cost with all kind of nonsense. But at the end of the day, the money will just got sucked in and distribute equally. Will you still want to cheat? You'll be thinking, I cheat for what? See, the whole idea of why people are cheating is because they're greedy that they can make more money. But when everyone makes the same portion, what is the point of cheating? That is socially mindset, socialist thing like that. Now, can we achieve something like that? Cannot. Because you don't have example that's like that. Because we are in a capitalist world. But I do have a simple example. I hope I have. Uh, wait, wait, uh, let me, let me. Sorry? The country is run on a socialist manner. Uh, but they are, they are still not a pure socialist. Uh. That's why the company is still free to make their own money. Uh. You still retain your, your own profit. Okay, let, let me see. Uh, I, I hope I have. I don't have. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, wait, huh?
Hey, I found the net bank. Okay, then I just go to this. And, uh, okay, 2017. How come just I search I don't have? Uh? Okay, now, uh, you see the concept, right? That what they do... Okay, what they do is they, they assure the producer that that's what you're going to get. Even though at the end of the day, you don't have any output, right? You're going to get your money which they take out the element of risk. Now, the only problem why people are greedy is because they're scared they can't make enough, so they want to make more. So they have assured them the element that there's no risk. At the end of the day, you're going to get this. And, and we're paying a premium. You know? And the thing is, they get everybody to feel like the owner. And you're going to eat that rice. So when you're going to eat that rice that you, you plant, what kind of approach you're going to use. You, you try to be as pure as you can, right? That's why you will not do any nonsense. You'll be thinking like, whatever you do at the end, it comes to you. Now, that is actually a very close example of socialism. But you can only see that kind of concept is workable on a smaller community and it's on specific things. It cannot be like on a large scale. So it's probably going to be very, very hard. Okay? Now, but that is socialist, okay. Feminists, on the other hand, now they, they have a different argument. This is another group of people that says the problem is caused by the man. I was hoping some girls would, mm, mm, mm. All right. Ryan immediately look at me. <laughs> now they say that society and businesses are based on value that are considered masculine. And they give example like aggression, aggression, power, okay, assertiveness, hierarchy, domination, competition. They say this is male behavior. Alright? If you agree, or if you don't agree, okay? So they say because of all this behavior, Environment is in a mess because guy want to fight. All the president who start the war is male, which is true, right? The woman said, "Let's go for a war. Let's launch a nuclear." No, no. all right. So male is the problem. You always want to fight, is it not? Except Mulan, the only female. All right. Now, so they say that they are in a mess. So how do, you, how do you restore the order of things? They say to restore the order of things, you must go for value like connectedness, equality, dialogue, compassion, fairness, mercy. And they say these are feminine characteristics. 
but that's the view lah, okay? So you agree or not? I, I don't agree, alright? I don't agree not because I'm a male, okay? I don't agree because I don't think that these kind of qualities is actually stereotyped to a gender. You can have a female that's very aggressive also, alright? I remember the, 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 the image of the woman take the high heel and knock the boyfriend in Singapore. Because she, he doesn't follow her orders, he took the high heel and hit on the head, and then it was recorded and then it's put viral. You don't know what? Okay, then you go and Google. YouTube, YouTube. Woman, high heel, Singapore, man. Wow, well, then you get it. Okay? <laughs> now, so how do you solve the problem? You have to have a complete change in the culture. The how, how do you change a culture? I, I don't know how you're going to do it. So to me, it's what? Change all the male to female. So only female can become prime minister. Only female can become CEO. Female can become teachers. Female. So all the males sit at home and, and jaga anak. Is, is that what you mean? I, I, I really don't know. But I'm, that's why I say it's a very extreme position. You may not subscribe to that. Okay? Okay. The last position is called deep ecologist. Now, it's a very extreme position that they are now siding the environment. They say, humans have no more intrinsic right to exist than any other thing. And they are trying to put man equals with All the animals, the plants, all right? They're trying to put them equal. Human equals the animals, plants. Now, so they say that whatever ecosystems that we have is so valuable and so fragile that it's immoral for them to be damaged simply for human economic growth. Now, th then let me ask you, if you subscribe to this position, then how do you behave? You can't drive car. You can't even stay in your house, you know. <laughs> because your house is built from everything that comes from the compromise to the environment. You should stay in a cave. You should be like a caveman. You should go to the river and catch your own fish. And before you even catch the fish, you die already. Because you don't even have the skill. Alright? Yeah, you don't even wear your clothes because all this is wrong. Now, you know, how to, how to subscribe to that position? That's why this become a position that if you go to that extreme, right, you end up being a hypocrite. Because you end up banging, banging and say all this is wrong. But end up, you live in a world that you have it. For example, you know this... That, that was that great Greta Thunberg. Yeah, that, that's a girl who keep coming out and fight about global warming, about, about how we should save the world by cutting down the burning of energy, right? So, so and how are you living in a world that that is completely cut? Now, to me, I think she has a view on it. I, I mean, perfectly, we should take care of the environment, but I don't believe that we are cutting off. Because we can't live in a world like that, all right? But I still think she has been used by certain people for their agenda, ra rather than she really truly want to go for that, okay? Now, so th this is the three radical positions. So at the end, that's why I say, can you say which of these three positions are more socially responsible? I don't think you can. That's why they are radical positions, they are extremist views. So can you give me an example of a company that's in all these positions, which I said, I, I don't think I can quote you example. I don't have an example of a company that is in deep ecologies, because if you have a company that's deep ecologies, you can't even make money. I don't have an example of feminist view also, all right, that everything is towards feminism. So all this is just a concept of argument, okay? Right, so I have finished off this part to do with the seven position. So we have done with all that. Okay, page 107.
Now, if let's say indeed you are so motivated to pursue CSR, then one of those things that we are trying to suggest is you just want to be more responsible towards different stakeholders which then you will ask yourself, what can I do for my customer? And what can I do for my employee? What can I do for the environment? You, you probably will start asking this kind of question. Now, this is actually a guideline, a stakeholder management guideline, which I don't intend to actually run through. But it gives us some idea of what can you do for different stakeholders, like, in example, customers. If you are so committed to, to your customers, example of things that you might want to do, like they say, one, provide customers with high quality product. All right, now two, treat customers fairly. Give them safe product. If you look at uh, this uh, uh, body shop, have you been into body shop? Okay, those who have been into body shop, can you tell me what do you see up there? The moment you walk into body shop, you, look, you lift up your head, what do you see? Oh, what, what do you see when you go into body shop? Please don't tell me it's the bottles. Please. All right. She, oh, exactly. I saw all the bottles. All right. Now, what do you see? I see from outside. See from Cannot. You must go in. You go. You look up everywhere in the shop. But I, I based on what I see many years back, I don't see that. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy body shop. I got no body. Why do I need body shop? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Do anyone recall body shop business tagline? Their value. Body shop survive on the foundation of five value. Like against animal testing. Support community trade. Respect self-esteem. Save the planet. Why well, you all don't know. So those of you who are in the body shop, what do you see? Hello. Only see the bottle, right? Okay, now you go in and look carefully. Do you see the five or not? Okay? Now, they, they, they look into this value. For example, uh, they are against animal testing. That's why all their product cannot test on animal. Do you know how they do animal testing? Huh? Do you know how they do animal testing? For example, your shampoo? They find monkey and wash with the shampoo. And then see whether, see whether the monkey clean or not. If the hair from brown become white, wow, that, that's the shampoo. No, what they do is, example, uh, they take rabbit. Then they will use the shampoo and they will just splash the, the concentrated thick, thick shampoo straight away into the eyes of the rabbit. That's how they do it. Uh. Because they need to know if this shampoo goes into your eye, will you blind or not? If the thick, thick concentrated shampoo go in, also the, the eyes of the rabbit is still okay, they didn't go blind, then it should be safe on the human. So they test it on the animal. And all these that go through animal testing has a cruelty on the animal. Now they come into that human and animal part. So they say it's wrong. Okay, so if it's wrong, then how? Test it on human? Mingyang, donate your, your, your child and then we splash a sample on your child's eyes and then see whether blind or not. Will you do that? You say cannot. So at the end, you see, there's always an argument. That's why this can be an ethical debate. Whether testing product on animals should be acceptable or not. Or let the risk go to the human. You've got to debate. So end of the day, how do you value? So I, I don't see that the value of the animal and the value of the human is equal. And please don't put the, the equality in terms of the size because most people do that. Just like you kill mosquito, you don't feel bad because mosquito is small. You kill the ant, you don't feel bad because it's small. Then you kill the dog, you cannot laugh, but it's cruel. Then you kill mosquito, you never say cruel. <laughs> so if you have ever killed mosquito or ant, then you have no right to argue that kind of thing, because you're actually the same. That's my view. Uh. Sorry, I'm being like, <clears throat> okay, so that I don't debate with me, I whack you, cow, cow, one. Okay? <laughs> so, 
This, this is an example of things that we see. That's why if you go to body shop, uh, they have this value of respect, self-esteem. What is respect, self-esteem? Okay, a very fat woman. Beautiful or not? People will say, wow, you so fat like, like me. So fat. A lot of people say fat is not attractive, I got a big tummy, so what? I always feel good because compared with 10 years later, today I'm very fit. Compare with 10 years later, today I'm thin. I don't compare with 10 years ago. I always compare it later, okay? So I always go. Now, I, I, I don't see a problem with my appearance because I just find that it's okay. I feel that I'm good with what God gives me, so I feel great about it, all right? Now, but there are people who like to uh, look at your physical and they make fun of you. Why are you so short? Why are you so fat? Why are you so dark? Why are you so white? You know, that kind of thing. Now, but body shop believe that they give self, I mean, they respect self-esteem. So imagine if you have a customer that doesn't look so attractive. Like, come in and want to buy lipstick. How do you serve? So do you serve with that kind of respect that, you know, you are beautiful in how you are? And let the person walk out from your, your shop with that kind of confidence that I I just feel good. Or you will make the person feel so valueless and down and like not deserving. You know, there are people who talk like that, right? That's why you see in the internet, there are sometimes people who make fun. Now, example, you remember recently there's this restaurant? You know, when you order food, nah, there are people who, who, who say, uh, I, I want to remark less sugar. Then there's recent, I, I don't know whether it's a secret recipe. There's a cashier go and make fun and say, what, si gemot takut manis. Remember that recently, there's one? Now, that is not respecting self-esteem. Why do you call me Sigamo? What's wrong with me being fat? Ah, so, this is what we are saying. So, so that is example of policy that how you want to train your staff. Lah. Now, so I'm giving an example with different view of different stakeholders. Now, I'm not going through all that, but I'll just leave it for you to run through. Like, what can you do with them? Next time when we look at the, the code of ethics, you, you can actually see that all these things will come back, okay? Because company could develop their code of ethics using this principle. Okay? Which I will do this later. Then, then I'll come back and let you know, okay? Now... That is the part to do with social responsibility position. Okay, let's get a short break. Okay. Now. Okay. Now, before we go into the actual form of CSR strategy, just say an overview, like if you subscribe to a strategic CSR approach, that, that means we are looking at the intention that you want the CSR to bring benefit back to your business, okay? Now, of course, the, the first thing that we're going to ask is, do you actually have a CSR strategy? Like... Define what exactly do you want to achieve. And it's actually important when you create a CSR strategy, you should tie back to the value creation of the corporation. Me meaning, whatever CSR that you're thinking of. You, you know, example like, why do I propose we should do a tax return week? Because I can tie back to what we are doing, education, all right, and then concern ACCA, you know, it, it relates back to the product that we are doing. So you try to tie back. Now, example like going green, it's a concept that you can tie back to help you to save energy costs. So if you are a very energy-driven company where energy is the main element of your business overhead, then that could be a good CSR strategy to go into, okay? Now, then you have to have a CSR management system. Are you okay? You want to cough? It's okay, you can cough at the back. Just cough at everybody except me.
<laughs> okay. Now, so what, what exactly is this CSR management system? It will outline what do you actually need to make your strategy happen. Okay? You really need to get people that buy into your idea. You, you know, it can, it can turn so bad when people don't buy into your idea and then you like impose on them, you force them to do something. Eventually, it can turn out to be much worse. It's like, for example, if you're going to do a tax return week, then you're going to get those people who really don't want to join. The student feels so imposed and then like, okay, I know choice. Uh, then the, the guy don't know, simply go and give a wrong advice, tell them to do the wrong thing. Then our so-called clients end up getting penalty. You know, it may just backfire. It could be end up worse. So, so these kind of things is something that it has to come from within. You must get people that they really have the heart for it. Okay? Now, that, that's why they say you must engage people inside the organization and you need to find a good team. A good team that you can bring in together knowledge. All right? Knowledge. So that they can give you different elements of the strategy. In what way that they are able to contribute. Okay? Now, this will actually be the visible things. Like forming a committee. Who will be in the committee? Who will chair the committee? Who will lead this project? So you're going to start seeing the names of the people being presented. You start to see that budgets are being created. How much money you're going to assign? How much allocation? You, you know, that, that is your commitment. Because end of the day, the budget reflects your commitment. If you're so serious about this thing, how much money are you going to spend? Now, that's budgeting. Now, agenda comes in, training comes in. You, know, you want to achieve, like for example, to go green. How, how are you going to have a go green effort? A lot of people need to know how to do it. So that's where training will come in. Now, that, that is the part where you start delivering or implementing. Okay, How do you tell people what you've done? At the end of the day, if you don't like uh, 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 shout about what you've done, eventually people will not know what. So you need to shout your stories. People must know. It becomes like an advertisement point. So this is where the reporting is important. So the CSR reporting, it's the part where you try to translate your actions onto papers that people can read. And, and then it becomes a footprint that you can showcase. You can tell people that's what we do in 20, 2018, 2019, 2020. And then we can read, we can see performance. Okay. Now, we will then see how reporting comes in. So later we'll look into that. Now, and of course, finally, it's stakeholder engagement. Because you know that as a business organization, you have a very big group of stakeholders. And always know and understand that you do have stakeholders that will never like you. Whatever you do, they will just be against you. They just criticize you. So it's actually important on how you want to handle that kind of stakeholder. That, that's where stakeholder engagement comes in. How do you handle them properly so that the effects will not turn bad? Okay? Now, this is basically a bit of strategic approach. Now, but it does not really go into telling us, so if I want to start on something, what do I do? Like when you just now give me an example, like go into environment, like go green. Okay, what can you do as part of going green? Now some of you say start with stop using plastic bag. Okay, like MCKL has this policy, no plastic. That's why even the canteen, they don't give you plastic packaging they don't give you straw, that, that kind of thing. Okay? Now, so that's an example of an effort. All right? Now, but of course, you can have more effort beyond just looking at plastic. So, what kind of efforts that we can go in? 
Now we will look into that shortly. Huh? Okay. Okay. So if you go to page one one one. Okay. Uh, most organization, if they want to embark into CSR, right, they must be seen to have a more holistic approach, that they must be seen that they cover various aspects. And one of the main things that, that set the framework for the organization is a code of ethics. Because the code of ethics is basically the do's and the don't. So everything starts with setting a framework, setting a set of rules. I must first tell you, these are the things that you cannot do. These are the things we want you to do. And, and from there, you design your strategy. Now, that's where code of ethics comes in. Okay. Now, but before we, we look into code of ethics, I do need you to understand that there are many types of code. All right. Or there are many layer level of codes that we have. And what we are considering right now is the corporate code. Okay, what we're considering right now is the corporate code. But beyond that, you can also know that, okay, example, we have professional code. Professional code will be example like what? Like our ACC has a code, right? And it basically um, controls the way accountants behave. That's a professional code. So I believe different profession have their own code. Like I think lawyer will have a code. Engineer must have their code. All right. So that, that's professions code. Now, we also have industry code. Uh, what do you mean by industry code? Now, industry code, it's more for if you are in an industry, how do you behave? in that industry so that you set an ethical standards for the players in the industry. Now, there, there are a lot of industries that can be very controversial. Example, uh, uh, how sure are you no one in Gmail reads your Gmail? How sure are you? How sure are you when you send one funny photo to your boyfriend in Gmail? And that nobody at the back is looking at the photo. I don't know. I just thought nobody see it. Right? You know? so, so, there's so much information that goes through all these things. And are you telling me that they are not exposed? I don't agree, right? I believe that they must be able to access all these. Because it's stored in their server. It's really up to them, right? But if they can assure you of their ethical standard, that you know we, we don't do that, all right. That's why if you if you see uh, a Mark Zuckerberg during his court hearing, I don't know whether you you, you got see that or not. That it was a very funny court hearing because all the OO people asking him a lot of questions, <laughs> and he felt like this is a stupid question, right? So if if you watch that. You can see how they ask him questions like, uh, are you saying you know what is inside the content that is being sent in and out? And, and, and he basically say, yes, we know, but we don't do that. Now, how, how do you assure people that you really don't do that? Okay, now this is just one example of how we see from the point of view of this IT industry. There are a lot of very controversial industry. For example, medical is a very controversial industry. Do you know placenta? What's a placenta? Yeah, that keep the... Okay, do you know placenta is believed to be very good for cosmetic? The woman should know, right? That's why you have this thing called lamb... No, sheep placenta. Sheep placenta. Chinese word called yang tai su. You can eat one, you know. People eat the sheep placenta or they use it to do the, the cosmetic product because they think it's very rejuvenating. It, it really helps you to get younger and prettier. And women go a lot of extra miles just to look good, right? No. Men also. Whatever. Okay? <laughs> Alright? Now, 
Why are they using sheep plus and duck? Because sheep is better, is it? Exactly, because you cannot use human. Ma. All right? They don't use sheep. Oh. But how do you sure that they don't use human? Okay, what happened to all the placenta that the hospital has collected after the woman given, given birth? Where God, hello, don't, don't talk nonsense. You, know, you have not given birth before, don't talk nonsense. I have never collected placenta before. I have never, like when I, when I discharge my wife, I have never seen that. Uh, I missed Okay, give one one bag of bloody things inside. You open you. What is that? Ah, that that's all the things that come from your wife. You take home, you see, you know? hey, hello. I, I have never come across that. So meaning the hospital must have taken care of all these things. What if the hospital sell your your stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know only my yeah, yeah, yeah. What you don't know only what? The best thing is they sell, then you eat back. Yeah, okay, now. So, so, that's why I'm saying it's a very controversial industry. How sure are you that people are not violating their ethical norm? Now, that, that is always the, the concern. Okay, how sure are you? You, you know, there's this scandal that happened uh, in, in China, okay? That they, they sell the, you know, the down jacket for winter one? that they use the, the, the down feather, the, the dark feather, right? That there's a down jacket, lah, but this is the inside is cotton. Very cheap, you know? how cheap or not? It can be like 30, 40 running B. That means you, you buy this one, but you know the soft soft type, right? If you go to Uniqlo, you can see the soft soft type. Huh? It only costs about 20 ringgit only. You think, wow, why so cheap? Oh? Wow, I got ones that they open up, huh? inside is all what, you know, the hospital cotton. Huh? That people use uh, with all the stain on, uh, they go and process it and use it inside. What? what? That long? So you go back and try it, uh, open it, uh, see? Wow, all got blood one, got patches. <laughs> but but not all like that, uh, not all. Okay, but they caught they caught people that did that. Okay? Now hotel it's a very controversial industry also. How they clean the thing? How sure are you they clean it? They switch room. If, if you are that extent that you don't even want to clean, why do you want to switch a room? You just do it. Lah. Nobody knows. Lah. So all these are examples of why uh, we believe that industry needs to behave in a certain manner. So, so that's why players in the industry, usually they can come together, then they can like form an association and say that this is the standard that we upheld. And then you may want to join us to upheld the same kind of value. So that, that become an industry code, a code for the industry. Now, you can have code for program, like some kind of accreditation. Okay, some kind of accreditation. To claim that you've achieved certain standard, okay? Okay, now we will just concentrate on corporate code. Okay, what, what exactly is a corporate code? Now, a corporate code, a corporate code, it's basically the do's and the don'ts of the corporation. Okay, the do's and the don'ts of the corporation. The corporation as a player, okay, itself uh, has to commit to certain standards of behavior. Like just now, I, I, I asked you all, what do you think about social responsibility? And some of you say, what? No, ch no child labor. Now, at the end of the day, whether they have child labor or not, it's really up to the company's policy, right? So if the company set a policy, right, we don't use children. That, that, that's it. That's how the corporation commit to certain ethical value. Now, that is the code of ethics of corporation. Now, so if you want to think of the corporate code, right? Okay, if you're thinking of a corporate code. Okay, let's, let's put ourselves in this uh, problem. Today, you, you go to work and your boss say, hey, come, come, come. You, you know, uh, I, I want to make my company look better. We never have a code. 
can you draft one for me? I mean, it shouldn't happen in that way. Lah. It should not. Because if you do it in that way, that means your code is just for the sake of showing. But let's say your boss dumb you that mission. Let's draft a code for my company. Now, what is in your mind? How do you do that? Okay, this is what we do. We will first identify who are our stakeholders. Please down all the stakeholders. Okay, then we will ask ourselves how do we as organization treat them? How do you treat your stakeholder? Now, so what do you do is you ask yourself, who are your stakeholder? Now, if this is the company, stakeholders can be employee, customer, supplier, shareholder, creditors, environment, the government, the community, the future generation, this can all be a stakeholder. Now then, each of these, we got to ask ourselves a question. How would you treat your customer? What do you offer? How do you treat your supplier? How do you treat your creditor? Actually, credit supply more or less the same, okay? Employee, shareholder, environment. See my arrow. Huh? How do you treat them? You know, not how they treat you. you know. How do you treat them? Okay? Now, if you are an employee, all right, if you're an employee, collectively as an employee, what do you want from a business organization? Please don't tell me high salary. Beyond that, what would you expect from an employer? How do you expect an employer will treat employee generally, collectively? Appreciate, okay, in what way? Like recognition of your work effort? Give you due recognition? What else do you want? Sorry? Accept your idea, be respectful, alright? That, that, that kind of thing, respects your esteem. Anything else? Child labor is one of it, right? Do not use child labor. And entitlement. So it's still back to money. La. Okay, pay you fairly. La, huh? Okay, pay you fairly. What else? Do you think discrimination is important? Yes. La. What kind of discrimination that you will not want to see? Gender only. Eh? Gender only. Race. Oh, I thought all discrimination you don't want to see. All la. Okay. Now, yeah. Do, do, so probably gender discrimination, age discrimination, uh, I mean race discrimination, that you don't want all that, right? Now, how does the organization commit themselves to all these things is they come up with a code. You, you know, how ironic will it be if your code say, uh, we do not discriminate race, but the moment you go inside the office, uh, wow, 99% all Chinese. Or 99% all Malay, or 99% all Indian, and you say you don't discriminate. How 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 valid is that statement? People will look at you and say, "Hey, hello, you, you're not living up to your word." You know. Now that's why when you start saying no discrimination against certain thing, then you report. For example, you say no gender discrimination. I look at your proportion. 75% is male, 25% is female. I'm gonna ask you. Where is your gender discrimination policy? How come it's like that? Now, you have to walk the talk. That, that, that's the difficult part because the moment you have it, you don't do it, people will ask you. That's why don't say the wrong thing. Look at the politician. They are laughing stock. Like, for example, Muidin. People now use back all his old video, right? You can see or not? Muidin come back with all the old video. He said that, Will you want to work with Amno again? Will you want to work with Pass again? Never! No! He say why no? Today what happened? Yes. <laughs> so the, the problem is like that, no? When you say something and people use your word and turn back against you and then they'll ask you how to trust you. Now walking the talk is the most difficult thing to do. Because you've got to honor your word. So do you want to commit yourself or not? So think carefully. 
Because the moment you commit, you don't deliver, people will not trust you. Now, that is the whole thing about code. Okay, if you turn to page 112, You know Unilever? Give me an example of product Unilever sell. Huh? Ada, ta, yeah, the shampoo. Tama? Huh? Oreo, ah. Doria, what is Doria? Oh, L'Oreal, L'Oreal. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Is it true? <laughs> give something you know, la. I don't know. Simply give, okay. I, I really don't know, but I know they sell a lot of things. Yeah. They, they sell Cornetto ice cream. Yeah. And then uh, they have a lot of canned food, you know, your jam. I think that, that, that uh, what ladies' choice? Uh? Uh, so actually, you just turn to the back, you can see. They sell most of the product. Actually, your house sure got one. It's impossible. One of the things in your house is not Unilever. Impossible. You don't believe? Go go and try. Check. Okay, you can find nothing uni level, you tell me. I give you one whole month of uni level supply. Sugar one, ah, sugar one. Okay. Now, uni level is uh, it's said to be one of the best corporate governance in UK. And they still are. Alright, they still are. Uh, so since we're talking about the code, I, I just want to let you see uh, how they have phrased their code of ethics. And what are their commitment? And and you can then assess and see, do you feel good about what they say or not? Now, example, uh, uh, they mention about how will Unilever treat employee. Simple statement, only, but I think it, it's, it's strong. All right, It's strong that the commitment covers a lot of things. Unilever is committed to diversity in working environment. So the diversity means you expect there'll be a lot of different race, different age, different gender, different faith, that kind of thing, right? And there must be a mutual trust and respect. So they will not feel more inferior. Like I, I come from, for example, I feel like I'm black, so I'm not so good. That's why they got condemned, you know? They got condemned for their advertisement. There's one daft do an advertisement of this lady who take out the quote, right? Sorry, I don't know what are you thinking, okay? <laughs> the way Ryan look at me, huh? Okay, <laughs> let, let, let me explain, all right? Before you go a bit too wow, the, <laughs> they wear many layers, so <laughs> the lady took off the cloth. So as they took off the cloth, by the time they lift up the cloth, the face changed to another person. Then the person will take out another cloth and change to another person. And take out another cloth and change to another person. I, I, I don't know what's the message of the advertisement, okay? But as they take out the cloth, the ending part of the advertisement was like that. It was a black chain to white. It was a black lady. Take off, become a white lady. Now, then people say, what are you trying to say? So imagine if I got an advertisement, for example, Indian, become Chinese. How do you feel? Okay. No. Then what do you feel? See, the, 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 the criticism is people are saying, are you sending a message that because we are dark complexion, we are dirty? That's why the white, the, the masala is better, is it? Ah, so they got kena hentam. Then when they kena hentam, people ask them, look at your code. What do you say? Wow, that's why you see, do business so easy. Eh? That's why don't simply call me, you know. That's why you get married the time uh, your wife asks you before your wife married, give you 10 things to read. I will not do this. I will. Before you think, you think carefully. Hey, this one I cannot read. Like, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> so you as a woman, uh, you record down. As you read, record down. And every year, uh, Valentine's Day, send back the, the video to him as a reminder. See, you say that, because, trust me, you must do that. Because sometimes we are forgetful. We tend to forget. So we need to be reminded. Okay? Uh, that's why those days the king uh, has to read the law in, in the history. Uh, the king uh, every day must read, not every year. Uh, every day read the law. Make sure that the king don't do the wrong thing. Because as a king, if you do the wrong thing, you are more hypo, hypocritical, all right? which is very bad. Okay. Now, so this is the quote. So they, they say diversity, respect. Now, read on. Uh, we recruit, employ, Promote on the sole basis of qualification, abilities. 
So we don't promote you just because you are what color. Okay, that's why we always joke, right? Malaysia like to use qualification and not qualification. 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 Sorry, uh, you may not understand. Qualification means skin. Malay word for skin. So they use qualification, not qualification. Okay, so your skin color determines your capability to be promoted. Which, again, if you deny, but you can see the fact is happening. Now, but they say no, we, we don't do that. Now, they go on and say that we, we are committed to give you a safe and healthy environment. Now, they, they say we will not use forced labor, compulsory labor, child labor. What is example of forced labor? No, la, now we've got slavery. Not much la. I, Yeah, but not much la, Okay, not 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 the one that's so obvious la. These like quite these, these are company usually don't do that either. Okay, it's it's not like the British India type la, Okay, now, we we are now two thousand twenty already. Okay, but they still have forced labor. In what sense? Like they don't give you leave, don't give you break. You must work long hour now, which is still the problem that's in Foxconn in Apple. Foxconn in China, the Apple supplier that made the handphone. They force the worker to work extended hours because sales very good, man. Then they need to come up with the output they cannot do, right? So they force the worker to work non-stop. Then the worker work very long hour. Alright? So that, that's the problem. To, to the extent some of them write short notice uh, to cry out their pain and put inside the Apple phone, the box there. Uh, Hopefully that anyone buy open up and go and viral the thing. It's very normal, you know. That's why sometimes you 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 buy maybe a packet of biscuit, you eat now. Hey, why got this one piece of paper open up? I say, I'm dying, I'm dying. <laughs> and then you don't throw away, you know. Because the person hope is in your hand. You must quickly take the photo and put it in internet and viral the thing. And say that I found this piece of paper inside this biscuit. Again, you don't trust me, alright? <laughs> I'm telling you seriously, and that's what people do. Okay, now go on. Uh, they say that uh, we respect dignity. We allow staff to have freedom of association. Now, that, that's example of employee. Okay, consumer. Is consumer their customer? No. Consumer don't buy from Unilever. Consumer use Unilever product, but they don't buy from Unilever. Do you go to Unilever and buy things? No, you buy from where? Tesco. Tesco. So Tesco is the customer, but we are the consumer. We buy from Tesco. We don't buy from Unilever. Now they say they say we are committed to provide branded product service that consistently offer value in terms of price and quality. Okay, let, let me just ask you one simple question. You know, you know this are thing, uh, Chinese especially, they're very bad one. Okay, I have one shampoo. Okay, don't, don't put water. Okay, milk powder, milk powder, milk powder. This can, uh, for example, $30. This milk powder, for example, $50. Two can, uh, A and B. Uh, A and B. Which one is better? You think? Uh, you sure? You sure? You sure that just because it's more expensive, it's definitely better? Well, I tell you, a lot of Chinese, when they do business, what they do is they give different color, but it's the same quality. Uh. You feel better. All right? You go to all the saloon, uh, for example, uh, you go to saloon, uh, you see, they say, uh, this, this chemical, uh, red color, uh, 10 bucks. Or this one, different, green color, 20 bucks. Better, uh. better, uh. yeah, better. Because it's more, it's actually the same one, color different. How sure are you that they're really better? Who are sure that? Have you take the thing and go to lab and test? Uh, so how, how can you be so sure? It could be a lie. Uh, but now Unilever say, don't worry. We commit in our code because we tell you our quality must consistent with the price and the quality. So the more expensive shampoo must be better. The cheaper shampoo is definitely not so good. So next time when you go and see all the Unilever product, you compare this shampoo, Unilever, 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 this one more expensive, definitely better one. They say one. Unless they lie, lah, huh? okay? Now, 
then uh, they, they commit that their product must be safe for intended use. Meaning, if you take the shampoo and drink, you die. You cannot blame them uh, because shampoo not to drink. One, uh. The intended usage, you, you must follow. That's why you must follow. Uh, this is a product for cleaning the floor. After you clean the floor, you walk, you shouldn't be affected. Is it not? Uh, that, that's what they basically say, say. Now, product must be properly labeled. Labeling is very important. Like if you sell this product to Japan, you know Japanese, the English not very good. That all these English words, they won't understand one. So you must convert. So that's why you may change the Japanese word. Now, advertise. Like what is the best time to do advertisement? Depending on what products you're selling. If you sell children product, for example, stacks. All children look at the advertisement. They should say they want one. They never have discernment. They don't know what is good, what is not good. But you have. That's why the advertisement for children products should be aired during what time? Cartoon time. Right? Then you're influencing the children. So you're very unethical. <laughs> Correct, no? During cartoon, you keep showing ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Sure, the children want your ice cream. Right? That's why you must advertise your ice cream during midnight. When the couple together doing don't know what, then you advertise the ice cream. Yeah, spoil the mood. Can you see that? But, but you let the adult think, should the children take ice cream or not? Imagine the Apollo Super Ring come out midnight. <laughs> what is this, man? Uh, but, but that is called responsible advertisement. Which is very true, no? That's why they, they actually cut advertising on certain products. They don't advertise. They, they, they say they don't want to advertise because they don't want to be seen to influence the children. But they want to respect choice. That's why the product is there, but they don't want to advertise. Now, this is example of what they do. Now, if, if you read through all that, you can see example of things that Unilever are committed. Okay? Now, I leave all that to you because it's only a sample. And just now, remember, I've told you about the stakeholder principle. In page 107, 107, 108, 109, it's consistent. One. So you can run through and, and use them as an example. Qu question will not ask you to draw a code, la, but they more or less you must know what's inside the code. Okay, now let's look at the practical application. Please go to page 111. 111. What is the purpose? Okay, why would you want to even have a code for, for, for your business? Why would you want to do something like what Unilever did? Now, example, one thing they say is they want to communicate their ethical value to all the different stakeholders, to their customers, to their employees, so that they know their value. Okay, fine, all right. Now, it's also a way of controlling unethical practice by putting limit, by telling them what are the don'ts, what are the things that we do not tolerate. For example, like bribery. You don't want to tolerate bribery, so the code must be very clear that nothing involves corruption, bribery practice. Okay. Now, and, and towards that direction, you actually help to create a culture of ethical behavior because it shows your commitment. It shows this is what you want to achieve. So the culture is there. Okay? Now, quite standard, right? Now, we think that the code can be a strategic positioning tool. Okay? It can be a strategic positioning tool. So I put that at point number four, la. one, two, three, four. Okay, I put it at point number five. Now it can also be a mitigation measure. Like if you have crisis, okay? A mitigation measure, strategic positioning tool, 
and as a mitigation measure, bracket crisis. Okay. Okay, what is strategic positioning too? We are talking about image or reputation. That, uh, you, you know, sometimes you associate the brand with a product. For example, when you want to buy instant noodle, you just tell people go buy Maggie Me. So everybody is Maggie Me. All instant noodle is Maggie Me. Okay, go buy Maggie Me. But what do you want? I want the 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 in the Korean one. But you still use the word Maggie Me. Like those days when we are young, uh, Pampers uh, are so famous until everybody call diaper as Pampers. You ask a Chinese, you know one. They wear Pampers. Wear Pampers. I mean, where got Pampers one? It's a diapers. What Pampers? But they call Pampers because the brand is so famous until the brand become the product. Can you know? Ah, uh, agree, right? Eh? Like, you can think of a product and you try to associate the product with certain value. Like, if I say safe car, what brand of car that tell people about safety standard? Which car brand? No one. Voila. <laughs> think again. <laughs> Actually, if you talk about car safety, right, maybe maybe you are not so into car, but if you talk about car safety, right, it always go for Volvo. Volvo. Mm. What last time one? Now no man? Do you know most of the safety technology are invented by Volvo? Volvo is the one who invented the safety belt that you are using. The three-point safety belt. Do you know the car wasn't a three-point safety belt? The safety belt that you use in the original car is like the aeroplane one. You just buckle like that. Then every time you got accident, people fly off. So Volvo invented the three-point safety belt. And Volvo was thinking, should they patent the design? If they patent the design, no other car can use it. That other car will probably have to use the Formula One under that. <laughs> All right? Now, so, so Volvo is thinking it's a very important safety uh, 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 measure, so they allow all the car to use it. That's why your car safety belt, you must thank Volvo. Volvo is the first one that the airbag is outside the car. One. Yeah, because all the time you have accident, you need to think of people in the car, right? People outside the car, let, let them die. So if your car bang a human house, how do you protect the human outside that you're about to bang? Uh, so they come up with car, the airbag is outside one. Volvo is the first car maker that come up with the technology that before you're going to bang, the car will stop. The pedestrian safety. That when you drive, especially now people use handphone, eh? they don't know, don't know, oh, die already, is it not? <laughs> but the car so smart that they scan, if people run out, eh, then they will stop the car. All right, so that, that was the first one who came up with the technology. So a lot of safety technology is by Volvo one, but you didn't realize because Volvo not famous. No more famous. Uh. Uh, actually, it's, it used to be famous uh, until people say it's very old-fashioned. Uh, but they say now they was acquired by the China company, my Geely. Uh. Geely, who bought Volvo, bought Proton. That's why they will transfer a lot of technology. So that's why people always say, buy the protons next time you get the Volvo technology. All right? Uh, the car will not bang people. And that's why when you want to drive car and bang people, you must choose what car to use. You use the wrong car, it won't succeed. Huh? You see your husband carry another woman, you get very angry. You drive the Volvo and bang him. <coughs> Stop with it. You see, you know? <laughs> the husband turn and look. Wow, what are you doing? Huh? So man, buy only Volvo, alright? Save your life. <laughs> Don't buy other car, Volvo, alright? Hey, by the way, uh, 
uh, whatever I say is only the new car got. Uh, I scared you go home, go and try the old car and bang your father. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that will stop. Wow, my license will stop. I try. Boom, wow. Please. New one. Alright? New one. Don't simply bang. Okay. Now, so th- this is what we are saying. The strategic positioning, it's about how you carve an image for your business. Okay? It's an image or a reputation. Now, like, like if you look at Body Shop, right? They are very successful. So Body Shop is trying to give people the image of very natural, very environmental friendly. That's why right. the moment you go to Body Shop, you, you don't care about what product. You just have the general idea that all their products are environmental friendly. So you, you have that assurance of using their product. Now, that, that is strategic positioning. Okay, what is the mitigation measure that we are saying? Now, example, eh? some crisis occur. Okay, some crisis occur, which usually crisis that affects your business reputation. Now, let's say... The killer baby products that I've said to you before. That all these companies are making, you know, milk powder, and they try to advertise that their milk powder is so superior to the extent that they receive a lot of negative criticism that, you know, there are people who don't know how to use the product, then they use it, that affects the baby, which I've told you before, like milk powder is very expensive one. So they cut the content to save money, which is not right, okay? Or they try to store up the milk that the, the child cannot finish, which then became contaminated. Then they feed the child again, the child got affected, then they got sick. Now, all that kind of things are there. Now, so if you have got all these kind of criticism going on, or example, let's say like Foxconn, they have been criticized for their poor employees' welfare, that like they've been forcing the staff to do overtime and so on. Now, how do you change that perception to tell people that I'm sorry, but I want to change? Now, so code could be a good measure to tell people that this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up something and I'm going to commit and that's how I'm going to be different. But you must understand this sort of thing, you only got one chance. Right? Because once you do it, after that, you still caught doing the same thing. What will happen? Nobody will trust you. Right? Then how are you going to say, I'm kind of another code? Sorry, the first quote wasn't very re- effective, so let's do another one. It, it's a bit hard, lah. so that's why you cannot abuse people's mercy. They don't trust you one time, you might want to change, but if you keep on doing it, right, that, then chances is people will not trust you. Now, all that is the things that we see concerning code of ethics. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, let's go to page 115. Now, <clears throat> whenever we talk about CSR, okay, if you're going to ask people, what are the example of CSR strategies that you want to pursue? Okay, what are the example of CSR strategies that you want to pursue? Now, we realize that many will fall within the scope Okay of the three piece now not not all the p all right many will fall within the scope of the three p okay 
This 3P, usually they like to call it as the triple bottom line. Okay? Or some, they like to use the phrase ESG nowadays. ESG is what? If you guess. Is environment, social, governance. That, that's the ESG, okay? And, and the reason why they, they actually replace the word governance with the word economical. In the past, it's called economical. But they somehow believe that when the governance is good, the economical aspects will be taken care of, okay? Okay, so that, that's the ESG. Now, some like to call this as sustainability. So if you see this diagram, right, you, you basically can see what we're trying to tell you. That the long-term sustainability of the business will come from three parts. The profit, the people, and the planet. That's the three P, okay? Profit, people, planet. Now, that's the old term of ESE. Economy, social, environmental. But now they call ESG. So it doesn't matter, it's only vocab on it. To me, it's just being fancy. Alright, they're just trying to change the way how they call things. Or some call it the triple bottom line. The triple bottom line. It's just an accounting framework that they try to incorporate performance of social, environmental, and financial. Financial means economical. <clears throat> okay? Now, honestly, uh, people don't look at economical sustainability. Most people don't care because from our perspective as an outsider, for example, we know that the company is already taking care of the economical sustainability. Which company doesn't want to make profit? Don't I, right? You know, naturally, the first thing they're going to do is how to make profit. And the moment they make profit, economically, they are sustainable. That's why economic sustainability is more like a going concern concept. So this is more like going concern. This is more like being profitable. So if you only pursue economic sustainability, there's nothing to shout on. You understand? There's nothing to shout. You, you, you don't shout and tell people, you know, what every year we make profit. See how good we are, right? People say, so? That, that, I mean, that's what you're expected to. But if you start bringing in example of measures that you've taken to protect the environment, that, then that's where the difference comes in. So that's why the concentration of CSR is usually here and here. Okay? That's the viewpoint. People usually look at people or planet as the two aspects that we should look at, we should pursue. And not so much on profit. Because profit is naturally there. You always take care of your profit. Right? But it's about what will you do to take care of the people? And what will you do to take care of the planet that count? Not the profit. Now, that will be the triple bottom line. Okay? Now, there'll be a lot of things there, but I, I don't want to go through one by one because I just want to give you the concept, okay? So now we, we look at the concept part. So, when a company pursue CSR strategy, then you can consider... The 
sustainability concept. The ESE concept. Or the triple bottom line concept. But as I said, these are the vocabs. People are very fancy because they want to show that they're different. But actually, they're talking about the same thing. Okay? They're just different vocabs. So you can look into any of these. And all that, usually they will focus at environmental, social. Okay? They'll focus at environmental, social. Okay, so let me just give you a concept of what does it mean to be sustainable. Then we try to use some example of environmental sustainability to, to just throw some thoughts, okay? To just install some thoughts in this. Now, the word sustainability, it's, it's better understood if they link them to sustainable development. Just go up, okay? Sustainable development. <clears throat> now, can we just read this together? Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising their ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Now, you can meet your present needs, but you must not compromise the future generation. <clears throat> okay. So, environmentally, okay, environmentally speaking. Uh, now, you give me an example of what would be sustainable or what would be not sustainable in terms of energy? Fuel. Yeah, fuel is not sustainable because you've got to take out the petroleum from the ground and eventually it will finish, right? And once it's finished, then it's gone. That's why we usually categorize that as what kind of energy? Non-renewable energy. Now, renewable energy is more sustainable. Okay, what, what are example of renewable energy? Solar, Wind, sorry, hydro, okay, hydro, you know, you put the turbine at the river through the dam and then it turns the dam and then it generates the power that, that's where through the dam, all right? Now, so you, you would use this as sustainable biomass, you know, they, they use all the waste and they use the waste to convert it to energy. Now, so now you understand that what is sustainable and not sustainable in terms of energy. Okay, what about sustainability in terms of food? Let's let okay, let's use fish for example. How do you see sustainable and non-sustainable? Yeah, they're catching all the fish is what? It's not sustainable. What kind of fish that they catch is not sustainable? Shark. Shark. Where would they catch the fish that it will not be sustainable? From the ocean, right? Okay, then what kind of fish that you catch will be sustainable? Huh? Sorry? Yeah, they bred. So we usually say farm fish. So farm is more sustainable because they can breed. So the, the source will not end. But if you go and take the wild fish, then you, you know the ocean fish, eventually you're going to finish, right? Now, so you see, the ocean fish is a non-sustainable source. So I ask you, player like McDonald, they got to make filet o fish, right? The fish come from where? If they take the fish from ocean, uh, die at you. Because you know how much fish they need to use to make the filet, you know? That's why McDonald's has in many years ago committed they only use farm fish so that their fish meat is from sustainable source. Now, if you look at example, the paper, you know the paper that we use is all taken from where? Tree. So you got to cut tree, right? 
Like if you keep cutting tree, what will happen? No more tree, but tree can grow, lah. Tree can grow, but just it takes very long time, right? Now that's why if you see the boxes of the paper, they always say that it's taken from farm tree. That means the trees are planted with the intention that they will harvest the tree for purpose of making paper. Now that's how the, the environmental effort comes in. Now that's how we look at sustainability. Now certain things can be more sustainable, certain things can be less sustainable, even in terms of the method. For example, when you go fishing, tell me an example of fishing technique that is not so sustainable. Ball. Ball. A dynamite, yeah. You throw dynamite. What will happen when you throw dynamite? All fish die, right? Not, not only the grandfather fish, you know. The father fish, the son fish, the grandson fish, all died, you know. Seriously, because the explode, they all died together. Right? Then you come, boom, 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 all come out. The Chinese got one very bad word. Uh. <laughs> Call. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very bad word. But actually, it's not a bad word. Lah. It's just that the meaning sounds very harsh. Lah. It's called hamka <laughs> chan. Because all die, you know. Can you say not? That, that's why it's not a good method. Now, we should ban this method. But actually, this is not so bad. Actually, dynamite are used by small operator. The big operator, how do they catch fish? You know what net they use on it? No, lah, electrical. <laughs> all die. To... <laughs> Imagine you. Imagine you scuba diving in the dive. <laughs> they use a net. I, I forgot the English term uh, that, that they use. Uh, we call pukat tunda. It's a very big net by big big ship. Uh, then they pull. Uh, then everything they go in. Then they destroy all the corals. Uh, so this is the problem. That, that's why one of the mitigation of how they solve this is they use a reef ball. I, I showed you before, right, the reef ball project from the Petronas one? No, ah? No, me? Okay, next time. <laughs> See if I can find it. It's quite interesting, one. Since we are ending, let's just look at that. Short one. Okay, it's called Patronas. The place name is called Similajau. Really la, that's this name la, okay. What are you thinking? The trawlers and their dragnets, they've destroyed a lot of the corals here. When the corals die, life goes with it. They have fished here undisturbed for so long. Even the turtles have suffered. Once tangled in the dragnets, they don't stand a chance. Fewer and fewer make it to shore to lay eggs. I was 20 the first time I dived. I still remember how the beauty of the underwater world amazed me. That's the reason I became a marine biologist. Watching the ocean's rich marine life decline over the years really upset me. Then I discovered the reef balls. The moment I saw them, I knew I could bring life back to the barren ocean floor. Like an artificial rock, they let corals grow. And because they're so heavy, they easily tear the fishermen's dragnets. That should keep the trawlers away for good. With support of Petronas and those who share my passion, we obtain these reef balls for the Beacon Conservation Project in Similajau Marine Park. So far, we've dropped 500 reef balls. Soon, we'll drop 500 more. In time, corals will grow and become a habitat for fish. 
in time, the turtles will come back too. This underwater gem we've been gifted will be restored. Once more to all who visit here. Wow, beautiful, eh? Petronas. CSR. CSR, okay? If you don't do petroleum, uh, the environment will be so much better here. See? That, 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 that's the argument that socialist is arguing. You keep pumping the petroleum from the sea, and you go and pollute the sea, and you now tell me you want to go and save the sea with all that 500 balls. But, but the... The advertisement is so beautifully done. Look at the small turtle. Wow, you see, wow. Petronas is my idol, man. Because, you know, but, but that's the problem. Uh. Seriously, they're very smart. Man. So next time we'll talk about that when we talk about risk management, how they manage the risk. But th this is an example of uh, uh, why I say the environmental sustainability. Because when they catch a fish, uh, they really destroy all the reef and so on. So that's why these are balls are used to tear the net. So that they will try to mitigate the environmental issue. Now, so, so that is environmental in terms of sustainability. So we can see what is more sustainable, what is less sustainable, and so on. Okay. Now, socially, what do you understand as sustainability? Social is always to do with human. Okay? So when you talk about social as human, then your sustainability is from the angle of what? Anything that improves our life, the livability of human. You give me an example of how are we are we becoming more socially sustainable as a Malaysian? Yeah, compared with fifty years ago. You don't know how to compare very not so old. Now, generally do you think the level of education of Malaysians are better? You think so? Of course. You see, my father cannot read. No, no. He can't even say... He can speak a few Malay words, but he can't speak properly. He, he's not legible. He don't know how to read. He don't even recognize A to Z. He cannot read at all. Can you know? But now, can you find generation like that? A bit hard. Lah. I mean, it's not as you know. You've got people that they still don't read, but not so bad. No? That's why the level of education has go up a bit. And will education improve the quality of life? Yes. So that is example of social sustainability. That's why Malaysia, you like it or not, has the best healthcare in the whole world. All right? Malaysia has the best healthcare in the whole world. Because Malaysia is the only country or one of the least countries, the healthcare is virtually free. Uh, or two ringgit now, okay? Or five. But it's still free. You, you know, you don't have to worry about when you're old, when you're sick, what will happen. Because people will come. And, and really, you know, sometimes I see the homeless people lying down on the street, right? Then we make a call, ambulance will come and pick them. Who will do that if they charge for health care? People will say, who cares, man? How are you going to pay? No, but our health care is good because it's free. So in terms of social aspects, we are very sustainable in that angle. But, but that is not so much from the company. These are all more garment effort. But if you're saying company's effort, what kind of effort that you do that can improve social social welfare or social quality from company? Price of clothing. Price of clothing. Uh, okay, like affordability is one of the things. Like, you can make something affordable, all right? Then you try to use an affordable range so that people are able to enjoy. Okay, fine, that's fine. Uh, staff is one of the usual social sustainability that people concentrate on. Usually, they focus with the staff. That's why they give staff, like, training, education. They give them, like, a housing benefit. They give benefit to the children, which improve their life as a result of working with these people. Now, all, all that are example of social, okay? So we are clear about what is environmental, what is social, okay? Now, then let's look at this part here, page 116. Okay. Let's look at sustainability report. Now,
if your organization embark into CSR. Okay? And this CSR can be focused at social or focused at environmental, which is the two arm of the triple bottom line. The next question is, how can you shout? so that it will improve your image. The image is important. At the end, it's all about image. Right? That's why we just do what do for people to know. Whether you actually do it or not, no, not important. Right? Can you see not? That's why the way you behave outside and the way you behave when you're at home is so different, right? That's why they always say that to judge your standard whether you think you're living in the right way is how okay are you to let people see the secret side of your life? <laughs> tough, right? Oh, okay, tough. All right. Don't worry, all the same. Okay. Now, so, so th this is the part that you want to shout and you want people to know about what you do. So the, the easiest way is we come up with a report and write all the things in the report so that people will know. Just, just like ACCA came up with integrated report. And ACCA keep advertising, you know. Hey, hello. They pay money in the Facebook sponsored, you know. Sponsored. So I'll be thinking, some, sometimes I wonder, hey, hello ACCA, you come up with integrated report just to tell us that you have integrated report, right? Why do you want to do advertisement? For what? For people to know. That see, we can do integrated report. See, we are the first professional to come up with integrated report. So, what's your intention? Image. To, to feel good, to look good. Now, the same thing happened here. If you come up with your own sustainability report, I think it's good that you want people to know. That's why reporting is always the measure of shouting your effort. Okay, so if you want to come up with a report, the next question is, is there a reporting framework that guides the way how the report is being structured? You know, financial statement you cannot simply do, right? Because you have what that governs financial statement? Yeah, then you have your IFRIS that tells you this is what you must do in treating all the thing, right? So you have a framework that tells you financial statement looks like this. Do you have a standard that says P and L must look like that? Who actually who set the format of P and L? Have you ever asked that question? I mean, like from the first day you have been told that this is how we prepare profit and loss, this is how we prepare profit and loss. But actually, is that somebody who set the format that must start with revenue, then minus cost of sales? Or, or it's just because everybody is doing it, that's why I'm doing it? Well, I'm asking a very difficult question. Oh, who set? Uh, which standard that set the format? Huh? What? No la. There's a standard, but I can't remember what standard. There's a standard that sets the format. So one of the standard, I think is uh, what IS one. Uh? Is it IS one? Is it going constant? Is IS one? Eh? That one is that one audit standard. <laughs> <laughs> this is accounting standard. Okay, okay. Anyway, not not important. Not important. All right. Now, what what is important here is that there is a reporting framework that tells you that's how you do it, so you follow. So back to our question now is, if I am so keen to come up with sustainability report. Now, it, it, it may not be a sustainability report. You can call it any name you like. I want to come up environmental report. So I only focus environment, nothing else. Or I want to come up with social report. Whatever name you call, you can be fancy about the name. But question is, do you have a framework or not that says the report must present in this format? The report must have this content? This is how you do it? Yes or no? Answer is no. We don't have a framework. 
And that's a problem when you don't have a framework. When you don't have framework, what will happen? People will do whatever way they like. And, and you will see that this company has this version, this company has another version, while every version is so different. And obviously, when you have your own version, how would you want to present the information? Will you be biased? For example, you only shout on the thing that it looks good on you, then things not so good, you maybe this one we don't tell on. Makes sense, right? Now, that's the problem that we're having. So, we have no reporting framework. It's not regulated. So, the key problem is always consistency in the reporting. And what is that solution? Now, there is these people called GRI. GRI stands for Global Reporting Framework. Okay, GRI. And what did GRI do? Now, GRI, they come up with reporting framework. They develop reporting framework. And what they have done for us is they prepare a framework for sustainability report. But it is merely a guide. It is not compulsory. So again, you can choose not to follow. And there's nothing wrong for not following. Okay? But, but, if you follow, then at least you can give people better assurance, right? And say, hey, you know, our report is according to the GRI reporting framework, you know? So at least people feel good. Lah. Now, but of course, if you want to quote them, then you really make sure you got to follow. Now, that's what GRI does. So they came up with a framework and tells us that, okay, if you want to prepare sustainability report, the report will have to have five areas. Now, again, it doesn't matter where and how you arrange them, but the suggestion is you need to have all the five things. So what are the five things? Next week, we discuss.